Welcome back to the Bates Kitchen, and if there's one thing that never gets old, it's Mama's cooking. So I brought Mama back into the kitchen, and we're gonna make one of our Thanksgiving and holiday favorites for you guys. It's macaroni and cheese casserole. Lots of melted, ooey gooey cheese. You're gonna love this. And honestly, it's just macaroni and cheese, but it's in a casserole dish. I would probably call it no fail macaroni because you can't go wrong with it, but it's gonna be some of the best mac and cheese you've ever had in your life. So, Mom? Okay, Zach, you know I love quick and simple dishes. This is another easy one, and the, your oven's gonna do most of the work. We're only gonna have about five or 10 minutes prep time actually involved, but the first thing to do is just boil us some noodles. What do I preheat my oven to? All right, let's preheat our oven to 350 or 375, depending on some ovens cook hot. 375 it yeah. is. All right, our noodles are boiling. Let's grate some cheese. We're ready. Cheese is coming up. Any brand will do. I like the extra sharp though. It's got that zip of This flavor. is not the brand that Granddad Used, but is, once you used it once, you've used it every time. I like it. I it's like, like it. Duke's mayonnaise for mom. You but gotta any, have... any brand. And now you're one that you taught me this. You like to mix your cheeses. So you happened to be at the house one time when I was making macaroni and you added some other cheese blends. Like There's no Buddha telling what it was. Stuff. Oh, but yeah. Anyway, I love all the cheese, mixed cheeses. Yeah. So mix it up. Get it to the style you like it, but you're gonna love the casserole For this version. specific though, this this extra cheddar is just a warm, hearty, Yeah. and it pairs so well when you're pairing with things like turkey and the cranberry sauce and all that. So the family has gotten so big over the years that now we call and we say, Jenny, make sure there's plenty of macaroni. She'll make usually three casserole dishes <laughs> of macaroni and cheese for our Thanksgiving dinner. And as soon as one comes out of the oven, a new one goes in. Between this and the dressing, that poor oven never, never gets a break. Yeah. I would say though, hands down, except for Mama Jane's turkey, I would say macaroni and cheese is the favorite dish at our Thanksgiving meal. Now, your dad, he always cooked for a lot. You didn't grow up in a family right. as big as the one you had, but you always had a house full. Oh my goodness. So my dad was a preacher and he invited company over just like your dad does. Our house was always full and dad, not like most families, dad did all of the cooking. Mom did not cook. Dad did all of the cooking, but we always had a house full of people and there was always food on the table. Had to, had to get me a bowl because this is going to be a lot of cheese when a it's shredded. A lot of cheese. We'll use about three of these for a casserole dish. I'm going to invest in one of them shredders that the hand doesn't have to do all the shredding. When you do find one, tell me. I'll, I'll do that too. Right now, I still have little people I can call to do my... Do you remember? You were that age. I'd oh, call, yeah. I'd say, Zach, There's something so special when you get help in the kitchen. <laughs> Love all that. All my little helpers. That's how it is when, when I've got the kids here. If I'm cooking, Casey or Bradley, Casey really has developed such a love for helping in the kitchen. And she'll be like, Dad, 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 can I help cook? Is this something I can help cook? I gotta be careful on the stove top because she's just not ready for all that heat well, yet, everybody but Bradley knows, loves it. Everybody knows that the person helping gets to sample. They're the sampler too. Uh, well, so. we're a small enough family. With 19 kids, you gotta spread them spoons out. But with we're a small <laughs> enough family that everybody gets a sample if it's something good when we're cooking. They all wait, make their way through and get a sample. That wouldn't have worked when I was growing up. Oh yeah, that cheese is looking beautiful. Don't you love, oh, fresh grated cheese. That's beautiful. Alrighty, so now that you have your cheese done, what do we got next, Mom? Okay, if the noodles are cooled and we've got our cheese grated, we're ready to start making those layers now. Beautiful. Okay, so I've got our noodles strained. You wanna put a little Perfect. butter in there, you said? Yeah, put a little butter and stir it up. It's just so that these are hot noodles and as they're cooling, I don't want them to start clumping together and sticking okay. together. I could just sprinkle a little olive oil in there, but yes, this one. is America. <laughs> Either one will so do. So butter it is. We already had this on the counter, so that's perfect. Okay, so. I've watched this get made a hundred right. times. So of course our cheese and our noodles are dry. We've got to have a mixture in our casserole to make it, you know, soupy. So we're going to add some eggs, which is going to actually congeal that casserole together. So I'm just using two eggs here. Okay. And New then whisk. we're going to put some salt and pepper in here with it. So is that... I brought your favorite salt, Mom. Oh, good. Can you put... This is the only salt my mom cooks with. <laughs> put about a half a teaspoon of salt and about a half a teaspoon of pepper. That's you got me about... That's cracked black pepper oh, perfect. right there. All right. It's about a teaspoon. Perfect. And then let me get a fork to stir this up. I actually have a whisk. We can whisk that. Ah, that's okay. I've already grabbed me a fork now. Um, we're going to I told actually... you, we did everything with a fork in my house. <laughs> now we're going to actually also use heavy whipping cream, and that's it. That's the last of the ingredients. So you've got macaroni, also... cheese... 
You can also used to use evaporated milk. Granddad used evaporated yes. milk in everything. You can use whole milk, like evaporated milk, heavy whipping cream. This is so that richest flavor. If you richest really want flavor. that richest. So when we fill up our casserole dishes, I'm, sorry, I'm gonna I'm this. gonna give you your amounts when we start to fill that casserole dish up. All right. So I've you kind of do that. it by vision. I do it by vision. So I usually hand us our casserole dish sack, and I'll show them. So in our bowl of sauce here, I've got two eggs some salt and pepper, and some heavy whipping cream. I'm gonna layer noodles, cheese, noodles, cheese. Two layers. Saltines. Well, so you can add crumbled saltines on top oh, of your yes. cheese, oh, right yes. under your cheese after we the noodles. To. Okay, granddad did that, Jenny does that. Mm. I don't usually do it. That's what adds to me, that's what adds that. The that okay, texture. well get out the saltines then. We'll need that. That is optional. You do not have to add that, but but the kids did grow up eating it that way. Listen, if mama's cooking, mama <laughs> gotta cook like mama used to like cook. Like mama used to cook. We can't be changing okay. the we can't be changing the rules. You know, it worked out real well that dad used to work at Nabisco growing up. Oh yeah. Because we always had re he said you can't use any other brand, it has to be real saltines. Grab me that stick of butter yeah. there, Zach. And that knife. For a family that grew up not eating anything name brand, we had a lot of things that we swore by brand names. Everything from just... Duke's mayonnaise to saltine crackers and real Ritz. Okay. All right. So, let's so a thin spoon layer of noodles, us, right? Spoon us out a layer of noodles there. We probably a need a spoon. bigger spoon. Yeah. There I, we broke, go. I broke my good, look at my oh, good little. Oh, no. <laughs> I love my wooden tools, but I hate when they break. And we just want this real thin. This is where I messed up. I tried to make this one time. Yeah. And I messed up by making my noodle layers too thick. We do have to fit two two layers in so there. So we're just going to cover the bottom. I mean, it's, it's a little more than a single noodle layer. We don't want any holes, but we don't want the noodles piled so thick that this you're going to... This is macaroni and cheese. There you go. <laughs> Key ingredient So we got to have there a lot go. of cheese here. Zach likes his crackers on top, and this if, is the way Granddad did it. If, Ma if we're going to eat Mama's cooking, it has to be the same Mama's cooking we grew up with. If mama changes the recipe, that's changing the rules. We can't do that. <laughs> you know, that's funny because Callie came in the kitchen the other day and I was making this and she said, where's the saltines, mom? That's so. right. If you're going to make it the way mama made it, same thing, no shortcuts. Same thing with the cheese. We don't want such a thick layer of cheese that it's just going to be like a glob in your mouth. Now we're going to glob it on the top, yes. but not down here. There you go. I'm you can tell see you. this sprinkling on. If, if, if you look at these layers, you can see them through the side. That's why I'm using glass. You can see just sprinkling them in. They're not too, they're not too thick, but they're they're generous. Okay, I'm gonna tell you a funny childhood fact. You'll probably remember this sack. Growing up, my dad did all the cooking. Another layer, right? And another layer of noodles. We're just gonna repeat it. Noodles, saltines, okay. and cheese. My dad did all the cooking growing up, and whenever he would make a meal, he would create some funny recipes. Like if he made pancakes in the morning, I know dye is bad for kids, but he didn't know that. We didn't that. know that in the 70s. He didn't know that back then. He would, he would put food coloring in the pancakes and make them green or whatever. He did fun stuff. But whatever he was cooking, he always sliced two slices, thick slices of extra sharp cheddar cheese, and it went on the side of our plate with whatever meal we had, breakfast, lunch, and supper. You know, you used to do that when we were very little. When we were, when y'all were growing up, cheese had to be on the plate with every meal. Your dad came from, you know, obviously Not a different cheese. family. <laughs> they didn't even eat cheddar cheese, they ate American cheese. So he didn't understand the Which culture one? of cheese is either in every casserole or on the plate with every meal. He didn't understand that. So now he's used to it, but I still. Mom would always get cheese with everything. It didn't matter if it was a sandwich. Yeah. It didn't matter if it was like, we would put pickles on the side of a sandwich for us, yeah. for a deli sandwich. <laughs> and she, cheese, and, and growing up, I remember that. I remember breakfast, yes. a lot of breakfast. We would have, you would have toast or eggs bacon, or something like eggs that. eggs and your two and slices of cheese. And two slices of, of yes. cheddar cheese. And if you ate sandwiches for lunch, you had your two slices of cheese on the side. We're gonna do our crackers and then end with our cheese. Oh, this is this is what makes it good right here. And don't, don't crumble them super fine. I actually crumble them a little bit. Cause you, these are not gonna you be- You like the crunch. These are not gonna be crunchy like crackers in the middle. They're gonna absorb and give almost a, a, a spongy, cheesy texture going to enhance the cheesiness almost in the middle. On the top, you are going to get a little bit of crunch, but it's not going to be crunchy like a cracker. It's hard to explain yeah. unless you not taste like it. Not like your casseroles that have your Ritz crackers no. on top that you drizzled in butter. So if that's what you're expecting, yeah, we're not going to get this that. This is not going to taste like a casserole. It truly tastes like macaroni and cheese. Yeah. 
Uh, if you've ever had Chick-fil-A mac and cheese or Cracker Barrel mac and cheese, There's that no layer of cheese on top. There's no way to describe this, but I promise it, if you eat it, you're going to throw away every box macaroni and cheese. In your house. Yeah, you will. And this is probably better for you in some way. I don't know, <laughs> but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep believing that, yeah. even though it's probably not that good for you at all. It tastes better. And you can't beat homemade. This is a real throwback recipe. I mean, really, all your work the oven's doing, it's going to cook in the oven, the noodles boiled on the oven, but the layering just takes, what, five minutes. And that's what it's, you love when you've yeah. got a lot of people you're feeding. Now, yeah. we're in a little bit of a situation. Because <laughs> I'm already at the top of my dish. We can do it. We can do it. I've got confidence. I have, the one time I tried this, I over I overran my cheese. Yeah. And it bubbled over into the bottom of my stove and I had a situation. Oh no, okay, don't do that. So don't mound it so high that it's gonna run over in the bottom of your stove. Yeah, and you, like I said, you just want the layer to be a layer of cheese. You don't want it globbed on so much that you, you know, you lose your taste Now of this is macaroni. what's about to make it. This is the secret, okay? What she's about to pour in here, this, this egg mixture. Okay, so I've got all the little bald spots covered with cheese. We're good on that. Now, this, remember, already has my salt and pepper in it. If you forget the salt, your macaroni will not taste good, okay? You must have salt, you know, in any pasta dish. So, we're gonna just pour this all over and it's gonna seep down, hopefully not over the side like I just did there. Y'all can't see that side, so that's, that's good. good, I'm covered. That's good. All right, I'm gonna get all my salt and pepper out of there. Now, I know you're going to use this because I know your rule. You yes. got to fill it up halfway. Now what I do is I also use some whole milk mixed in with this. So do you have some other milk too? I do. I don't want it all to be heavy whipping cream. So I'm going to, if you can see this, my macaroni casserole comes up to here. I want to go about a finger width below the casserole with my liquid. I don't want this to be dry and I don't want it to be too runny. So I'm going to Keep adding liquid until I'm watching it fill. There's some whole milk. And then I'm gonna add some whole milk so we're not all fattening the ingredients. Uh, whole milk ain't low fat either, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> all Never right, trust now, a chef. now you see that milk rising I up? I do, I see it. I you see, see what you're saying. You see that milk yep. rising up? That's why I love a clear dish. I can see it's right below the surface now. I'll get these measurements for you on a 9 by 16 pan. <laughs> I'm gonna go redo this with all okay. the measurements so we know how much is what. Thank you, Zach. Okay, so we've got our casserole. Wipe the edges there so we don't spill off any in the oven. All right, so I'm gonna cook this for about 45 minutes. We're gonna check it. We wanna make sure our cheese doesn't burn. I want my liquid to absorb out so it's not soupy, but I want enough when I put the spoon in, I wanna see just a little bit of liquid because we're gonna let it sit on the counter for five or 10 minutes. And those noodles all are gonna keep absorb absorbing. All that cheese. Yes, yes, so that it's it's the perfect consistency, not too dry, not too wet. Well, let's throw it in there. All right. Okay, so what we're checking for is how much liquid. We've got that nice golden. Now, when I put this in here, it's not juicy at all, but it's soft. So we want to pull it out right now. Any morning, it'll be overdone. This is what Thanksgiving at the Bates house looks like. And this is mom's go-to Thanksgiving dish. You can't, you can, is, you can change anything else about Thanksgiving, but not this. This is the best part of Thanksgiving right yeah, here. You've got that. You got a little bit of that cream down on the yeah. bottom there. You got this cheesy crust up top. And the crazy thing is here, let me give you your plate. Mm. The crazy thing is I'm gonna cut from right here from this other side. I'm gonna get a big old slice. This is what it normally looks like if you slice it. We've got that crust on top. Now watch this. I'm gonna come out of here and it's just, oh. I think it's time to taste this. All right, I'm ready. So you got all this just kind of oh. mixed up. But there's something about this where all this flavor pulls in. Go ahead and start okay. right now. Oh. I know you can't wait. Mm. All of this flavor pours through that top cheese. Mm -hmm. So this topping has so much flavor from the egg and salt and oh, pepper and butter. So good. So I love a big bite of that. So good. Oh. Mm. 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 No fail macaroni and cheese, take mm -hmm. me home. Mm -hmm. Forget the country roads. If you make this once, I don't know if you're going to love us or not because your kids are going to be begging this not even for this have mac and cheese or whatever other mac and cheese out there. This could be a main dish. It doesn't even have to be a side <laughs> dish. I, I would eat just this. I don't know how nutritious that is, but macaroni mm. on the main. We'd like a side of turkey 
for this Thanksgiving with our mac and cheese. But I'm sorry, Mom, you're trying to skip on me. You can't lose those saltines. You just can't not have them. The only thing you gotta mm. remember is don't cook it too long and dry it out or burn the cheese. I'm gonna tell you this right now. This stuff is so easy. If I can do it, you can do it. <laughs>